Welcome back. Our next guest lives in the beautiful paradise of Boulder, Colorado, and is here to share with us her new book, Midlife Emergence in the Spirit of Spring and All Things Rebirth. And what can we possibly do to really make the most of the season ahead? Jen Berlingo, thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited. Hi to hear about the book and about you. And I will say that the whole notion of midwifing ourselves into our our next season is, is something that just feels like it's such a great terminology and I'm excited to hear more. So tell us about how you have taken what others might frame as a midlife crisis and really turned it into a midlife emergence. Okay. Hi, Lauren. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, well, in psychology, midlife is um, defined as a period between like 40 and 65 years old. And I personally noticed a marked difference when I entered my 40s, which is a decade that's believed to be this liminal space between the first act and the second act of life. It's sort of, a, um, I see it as like a waiting room where we have this opportunity to architect the second act of life um, really in a new way. So I don't feel like midlife needs to be a crisis or an emergency. Um, so I kind of coined the phrase midlife emergence because emergence is defined as the process of coming into view or becoming exposed after being previously concealed, um, which felt really resonant to my own experience and the experience of my clients and friends and colleagues who are going through this midlife passage, just really unveiling this core self, um, this more aligned, authentic self. Well, and you bring a lot of professional coaching and background. And I know you also are an art therapist. I mean, you really have such a deep history. Share a little bit about you with our audience. Sure. Yes. Um, professionally, I'm a midlife coach and a licensed professional counselor in the state of Colorado. I'm a nationally registered art therapist. Um, I'm a Reiki master, a visual artist, and I'm an author and teacher on the midlife emergence. Um, I'm also a recently divorced 47 year old queer mom to a teenager. Um, so yeah, that's a bit about me and I've been seeing clients, um, professionally and helping them through life's transitions for about two decades. Um, and probably even longer when you look at, you know, really assisting in, um, the growth of, you know, personal, my personal life and others around me. So, yeah, I, I know that you've really touched on just so many aspects of of helping people into their whatever's next right whatever right. rebirth needs to show and i know that that takes it takes a very special person really mm -hmm. to to yeah. be able to see it for others and and move through it with others on the journey it's something that um you know many of us do in different ways yeah. but the way you've approached it is really special so why why a book i mean you're you're doing all the work um, well, yeah, I was inspired to write the book after, you know, having all the experience and guiding therapy and coaching clients in this. Um, but it was when I experienced my own really profoundly transformative passage and life shift in my early 40s, I started to write my experience down and share it on my social media um, in different little snippets. And people would respond to me. I got hundreds of comments and direct messages from people saying, this should be a book. I want to read more about this. And it had been a lifelong dream of mine since I was like three years old with my little typewriter to write a book. Um, so over the pandemic time in 2020, I started to um, create a, a book out of it. And um, it really felt like a natural way that this information could be shared more widely rather than the one-on-one -on -one work I do or the group work that I do online. And has it has it been working in that way? I know it's just coming out, but you've mm -hmm. definitely been using the process and I'm assuming that the response has been great so far. It has, yes. I've been um, conducting midlife emergence online um, group guidance programs for a couple of years, sort of test driving the material in the book in a way which has had a really um, wonderful response. And it's just been a way of like shaping and refining um, the book material. And yes, the book's coming out in mid-April. It's for pre-order, um, you know, before that. But um, the the early readers and people who've read it so far have um, really had a positive response to it. So and I you, feel grateful for that. Um, I'm glad because that's how it should feel, right? That's yeah. that's really when you're able to put all of your expertise, I think, in one place and see it 
between the pages and between the covers, uh, it does take on a, a new meaning. And you yeah. framed kind of a, a hybrid genre, right? Mm -hmm. a memoir. So you're using your own experience, but you've also decided that this book is something that could be used for people to take their own journey. So tell us more about the format that you're using. Sure. Um, yeah, the format teaching memoir is a fairly new one. I've heard it in different places, but it's a way of describing a book that's part memoir and um, also part like personal growth or self-help. So those are the two types of books I enjoy as a reader. That's what I like to read. So it felt natural to write like that. Um, I feel like memoirs are naturally instructive just in hearing each other's stories. And I learn and heal so much just from having, you know, people share their experiences with me. And I really wanted that to be a part. But it also felt um, really natural for me as a licensed therapist and a coach to weave in some didactic pieces of teaching and also these self inquiry exercises that I put at the end of each chapter. So each chapter ends with um, prompts for journaling, art making personal ritual and ceremony ideas on the topic or the theme of that chapter. Um, so readers can engage in any of those that they'd like. People all learn differently and engage differently. So I wanted to have like a buffet of different options for people to choose from in ways that they might want to um, have this help their own midlife journey. Uh, and I love that you're using, you know, all of your experience, right? I know the picture behind you is one of your own creations. It and is. The cover, the cover art, is also yours, right? It is, yes. And it's beautiful. And it feels uh, very reminiscent of Georgia O'Keeffe. It oh, feels yes. <laughs> free. And, and again, that's um, so much of what you're talking about. So let's let's talk a little bit about your clients, not by name. Sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> but, you know, you've come into this in your 40s. Do you find that that's the, the most common time frame where women make the shift or do you find yourself working with women 40s 50s 60s and beyond um my clients range actually from late 30s to you know throughout the 60s um and the time period i think where it's like at least for me too the fire felt the hottest or this like pull toward the um away from like the safe familiar stagnant homeostasis of life to this like seductive mystery of an unknown um, happens a lot of times in the early 40s. I've found uh, where women come in asking, is there more? You know, there must be more. I want more. It's really what I hear from clients a lot of the time in that phase of life. So um, and I know it also ties astrologically in with something uh, that happens um, as astro astrologers um, call midlife, the peak of midlife, um, 42 years old. It's the Uranus opposition. And that's actually when it got very loud for me. So I write about that a bit in the book and, um, and my clients tend to share some of those experiences with me as well. So, but it, it really ranges. Um, a lot of people, you know, who I'm working with who are in their sixties perhaps um, are still kind of feeling this, um, you know, generativity versus stagnation is like the life stage that Eric Erickson says that we're going through this struggle. They're really wanting more of the generativity, more of the like, the urgency of what's left in my life and what can I do with it? What can I leave behind? What is the legacy I want to I want to have? What's the impact I want to make? Um, and am I living in a way that's congruent for me? Or is this a result of social and familial conditioning that might need to be overturned? So that happens throughout that whole time. <laughs> and and maybe it doesn't require complete overturning. Mm -mm. It, but just be tweaking and adjusting, right? Are there are there exactly. commonalities that you find at different stages of life, or is it not? You don't connect the dots that way. Um, I feel like everyone's experience is so different, um, of course, and so I feel like, um, like you said, it, you don't need to, you know, take this giant leap off a cliff and overturn everything and change your whole life. I happened to, you know, do a lot of different things in my forties to shift it, but for some people, right, it might just be a small a small shift, but um, really what this time of life is calling us into is individuation. It's a second pass at this term, individuation, which is, um, we do the first one as teenagers. It's like a separation from our parents, but the second one is really more of a defining of self and a separation from 
the social um, roles and like cultural conditioning that we've taken on and just parsing out what of that doesn't fit for us anymore. Which hats do we not want to be wearing? Which ones would we rather try on and, you know, um, really, like I said, like a, a rebirth of self or reauthoring of, of self. And what a perfect time of year for us to do our own little closet, internal closet clearing is what it really feels like. Yes. <laughs> a very good opportunity for the dusting off. And especially after the winter we've all had, I think it'd be a great opportunity for a little refresh. And so, Jen, where can our readers, our, our viewers read or, <laughs> or get more information about you? And the, where can they get the book? I know it's in pre-order. Yes. Um... Well, my website's really a hub where you could find everything. That's just my name, jenberlingo.com. Um, but I'm on social media quite a bit. I'm a pretty visual person, so I tend to use Instagram a lot. My handle there is just my name, Jen Berlingo. Um, and you can connect with me in all sorts of ways. Um, if you go to my website, you can see different offerings for the one-on-one -on -one coaching, for groups, um, to buy the book. And yes, it's on pre-order wherever you like to buy your books, um, or you can even ask your local bookstore to order it for you if you don't want to order it online, but it's available now, which is really exciting for me. That is super exciting. And congratulations. We will post all of your links and all your handles and give everybody the opportunity to follow you and, and just learn more about your philosophy and also encourage everyone to take advantage of an emergence in this, in this new season of spring. Jen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks for having me. And we'll be right back.